Stephanie Arnold here, and you are tuning in for part three of my interview with myself. I'm trying to get to know my story, get it out on, um, on video, and get it transcribed so I can um, use it to share my story more on Facebook and be more authentic with my followers um, and to give me more content to share, right? So that's the whole purpose of this, and I am jumping in to another question, if you'll bear with me. I just finished, I had video one just covers question number one, what's your story? Video two covered questions two through six. And now I'm gonna go to question number seven. Describe your ideal team member and what does their beach body journey look like to you? In other words, where do you fit into helping them accomplish their goals? Wow, that's a loaded question. Okay, so I wish that you could see my desktop right now. You know what? Oh snap, I bet you can. Hold the phone. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, I'm in the corner now. I'm gonna hide this, hide these questions because my backdrop right now is a picture of Blakely. She is it's actually a photo of Blake Lively, I thought I did with her name there, um, who I have been obsessed with. I love her. Uh, this is a photo of her in, um, actually, I'm not obsessed with her. I'm obsessed with her character in Gossip Girl, Serena Vanderwoodson. And this is a photo from the show of her just walking probably Fifth Avenue, shopping with a beautiful bag and all styled and gorgeous. And she's like the epitome of like who I want to be, right? Um, looking at her, her makes me like want to get out of bed and do my hair in the morning. So I, I've put together kind of like this, and this is like my ideal coach in my head. This is her, like, this is what I want her to look like, which is why this is what I want me to look like and to be inspired by. So I've created this kind of like list of things that describe her, um, and who I'm looking for, for my ideal coach. So she may be in her thirties ish. She's probably married with, um, a kid or kids. She loves Pinterest. She's a crafter and loves DIY. Um, she prefers fancy dinners out to like, you know, she'd rather have like one like fancy dinner out than like three nights at Applebee's kind of thing. She loves to shop, fashion, and decorating. Um, she loves designer bags and stilettos. She's ambitious and motivated. She's driven. She wants to work, wants more from life, and she's a hard worker. She has a five to ten year plan for her life has expensive tastes, loves design or anything. Um, she's humble and she loves dogs. She is fun loving, but she might, she's shy at first. She can come off as a little bit of a bitch if she, you don't know her yet. Um, she's a loyal friend and she's teachable. She considers herself skinny fat, which in my head means that people tell you that you look skinny, but you don't, you don't feel comfortable in your own body and you don't, you're not comfortable in your own skin and you're not like fit. So she's skinny fat. She wants to tone up and drop maybe five or 15 pounds. She hates scary movies and provides commentary while watching TV. She loves to be outside, but she's not an outdoorsy kind of girl. She's struggling to find time for herself and her friends since becoming a mom. She loves Amazon and online shopping. She researches things like crazy and then impulse buys. She wants and needs to contribute to her household income and doesn't want a sugar daddy. She wants to make, make it on her own and spend her own money. So this is who, who I'm looking for, right? When I'm posting on Facebook, this is who I'm talking to. I'm talking to this woman who wants to be independent, um, but still supported in marriage and you know a mom who loves, who loves fashion and fun stuff like that, um, but who works hard, right? Um, one of the like biggest struggles, if you know the character Serena at all from Gossip Girl, is that she has had life handed to her on a silver spoon, but she works really hard to make it on her own. Like she doesn't want to just use her name to get things. She wants to work hard. She takes jobs that are hard. She works at what she, for what she wants, and she is loyal to a fault. Like she is incredibly, like fiercely loyal for her, to her friends. And so that's something that I look, that's like the key things that I'm looking for in new coaches on my team. So I'm going to stop this share. So I think you can see me again. Not looking like Bigby today. Let me pull up the questions again. Okay. So that I just described my ideal team member. 
um, for when it comes to what their beach body journey looks like to you, she doesn't have a ton of weight to lose. It's not really about weight for her. It's about confidence and having something that's her own and building a legacy for herself. It's about her proving to herself that she's worth it and valuable. It's not so much, she doesn't have a confidence maybe, but it's not so much a huge weight loss transformation because although I lost 40 pounds after having a baby, my weight loss transformation is not huge. I've always been skinny fat and I just got pregnant and now I'm fit. I'm, I don't want to say skinny. I'm fit. I'm fit and thin and lean, fit and lean. There you go. Um, so that's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for that girl. That's who I'm looking for for my team. So how do you feel, question number eight, how do you feel equipped to help new team, team members reach their goals? I feel equipped because I'm two steps ahead of new coaches on our team. I've done what they're doing, what they need to do to get to where I'm at. I've, I've made the mistakes. I've done it wrong. I've um, had the chance to redo it several times. I've thrown a lot of spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, and I know what works. Um, so that's I think that's because I'm ahead of them, and I'm trying to not trying. I am leading from the front in um, success club points in volume. I want to constantly be in front of my team, showing them the way, leading them to the promised land to show them what's possible. Um, I do know that I could do this better. I could better equip them. And I think for me, taking that step up is one-on-one -on -one phone calls with my team on a consistent basis. Okay, speaking of, question number nine. What is the defining factor for why people should work with you over other Beachbody coaches? I want people who want to work with me. I want people that relate to my story. That's why I want to share my story on social media. I want people to hear my story and I want them to be able to relate to a piece of it, to be able to hear what I'm doing and, or, or see where I've been, see the woman that I've become and want to be her too and want to become that better version of themselves. And for me, it's about the sisterhood they want to be in my inner circle. I want them to be in my inner circle. Um, if somebody, I want to interview somebody before they become a coach on my team because I want to know who you are. If I don't think that they'd be a good fit, I would highly encourage them to join another coach on our team. Um, join their team instead because they'll be able to relate more to somebody else. Like I want to know their story too. Um, why, that's why they should work with me. And because I have... The goal is to hit top 10 coach soon. And I want, that's going to take a lot of coaches that want to do this with me, but I'm determined. I've got huge income goals and huge goals to retire my husband. I've got a lot to, I've got a lot going on. I've got a lot to go. So I'm very motivated and I work a lot of hours where so many coaches don't put in the hours. They don't work every day like I do. They don't work several hours a day like I do. And we're currently ranked, why you should work with us. We're currently ranked 1,500 out of 450,000 coaches in the network. We're doing pretty well. So our team is growing and we're climbing up those ranks all the time. So that's why you should work with me. Question number 10, what obstacles did you have to overcome? The biggest obstacle I have have to overcome and I am still overcoming is myself getting in my own way sabotaging my efforts and not working as hard as I say that I will not doing the things that I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do them the way that I say that I'm going to do them I think an obstacle that I've overcome is um my hypothyroidism. When I got diagnosed with that and handed my prescription, I did some research, started changing my diet, and I reversed my hypothyroidism. I've overcome that. That's huge. 
Okay. Number 11, what were the most difficult things that you faced? I think being diagnosed with hypothyroidism was terrifying when that happened. I've also watched my team fall apart twice where I've gotten really close to um, really great momentum and then people leave me left and right and then we like start over again and that process has been um, exhausting and frustrating and that's been really difficult I think that's it okay question number 12 when was that first moment when someone gave you a compliment or acknowledged your transformation? When I started sharing my journey on Facebook. Seven days in, I started posting my shakes and my workout poses from, from Pio, pregnant, with a huge belly, and people were commenting left and right. And then the moment 30 days in, when I shared my before and after, I had so many people reach out to me and start to, you know, pat me on the back and say good things and other people that were judging me, even family that were calling me out and telling me that I was making stupid decisions, flipping my baby upside down, doing yoga. But um, that first moment was about probably 10 to 12 days into my fitness journey. Number 13, what pisses you off? <laughs> what pisses me off? When, when, Someone, whether it's a coach or a customer or a friend on Facebook, asks for advice, asks what to do in their situation, whether it's for their thyroid or for their business or for their personal life, whatever, and I give them advice and they don't do it. What pisses me off is when I do that, when I ask for help and advice and ask for what I'm not doing or what I need to be doing more of, and then I don't do it. That's just stupid. And that pisses me off when I'm stupid. It pisses me off when I miss my workouts, when I miss that commitment to myself, when I um, that pisses me off, yeah. I think that's it. What keeps you up at night? Question number 14. Knowing all the work that I have to do tomorrow because I didn't do it today. Because I procrastinated or I didn't prioritize properly. So that keeps me up at night. Also, what keeps me up at night is focused energy when I take it too late in the day. Question number 15. What accomplishments have given you a sigh of major relief? The day I hit Diamond as a Beachbody coach. It was pretty, I, I breathed really lightly that day. Same thing when I hit my first one star diamond rank. That was a sigh of major relief. Being done with childbirth, that gave me a sign of major relief. Having that first $2,500 month as a beach buddy coach, that gave me a sigh of relief. Number 16, how have you defied your own and other people's expectations? Okay, well, other people's expectations I can jump into first because nobody thinks that direct sales is going anywhere. People think, oh, she joined a cult, whether, you know, it doesn't matter what business, I'm not going to list other ones, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here, but when anyone joins a direct sales company, People expect you, like roll their eyes. Like you can, I can, I can feel people when I post stuff, I can feel them rolling their eyes at me like while they're not even like in front of me. Um, because they don't expect you, they expect you, oh, she's so excited about it, this will last a month, she won't make any money and she'll quit. And so I know that I've defied other people's expectations because I'm 25 months into my coaching business and I'm not going anywhere. And I'm successful. I've built a team. I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot more growth to do, but I'm on my way to my goals. I'm headed in the right direction. And I know that. And they see that. 
because they see that I'm still two and a, two years later, I'm still posting my daily workout and my meals and posting about the other things going on in our lives and sharing my story two years in. They're seeing me grow. They're seeing my results. They're seeing my consistency. And so I know that I've defied their expectations of me to quit and throw on the towel. Um, how have I defined my own expectations? When I put my head down and work hard, I can get so much done. And I amaze myself. And then I don't do it for several more days because I live on, I coast on that. And that's awful. But I can get so much more done. I set up, I'll usually set up like a to-do list with like 18 things to do on it in a day. And on like the rare occasion that I get all 18 done, I feel like I've defied my expectations because I usually just start my day and I don't ever like, it's never an actual to done. It's not, it's not a to done list. It's a to do list. And so it just revolves day after day, week after week. And just keep, I just keep rewriting things on the list, which is just irrelevant. I shouldn't be doing that, but that's where I'm at. That's how I've defined my own expectations. So, okay. Well, that is my last question for this interview. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to upload these now to my YouTube channel and get them transcribed so I can have um, all of this in writing to share with my team, to share on my page. And I'm excited. So thank you so much for listening in. I hope this was helpful for you. And um, I will share these interview questions in our team page so you can access them yourself and either interview yourself or interview another coach on our team or get interviewed by another coach on our team because I think this is really important for each of us. So that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.